Welcome back to the channel. Our topic for today is how to design a rectangular footing with eccentric loading. For the material and section properties, we have 27.6 Newton per square millimeter for the concrete strength. The steel reinforcement yield strength is 414 Newton per square millimeter. The column section is 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters. The base of the footing below the natural ground is equals to 1.6 meters. Let us take the dimensions of the footing as 3.8 meters by 2.5 meters by 0.6 meter. We will be using 20 millimeters diameter for the steel reinforcement and the clear concrete cover is 75 millimeters. The bearing capacity of the soil is 240 kilonewton per square meters and the value of soil density is equals to 20 kilonewton per cubic meters. For the service loads, we have an axial load PS equals to 1330 kilonewton. And a moment along x axis, MSX equals to 199.5 kilonewton meter and a moment along y axis, MSY equals to 133 kilonewton meter. For the ultimate loads, we have an axial load PU equals to 1808 kilonewton. And a moment along x axis, MUX equals to 271.2 kilonewton meter and a moment along y axis, MUY equals to 180.8 kilonewton meter. The first step is to calculate for the effective soil pressure, Q sub E, which is equals to the bearing capacity, 240 kilonewton per square meters, minus the weight of soil, 20 kilonewton per cubic meters multiplied by the height of soil, 1 meter minus the weight of concrete, 24 kilonewton per cubic meters multiplied by the thickness of footing, 0.6 meter. And that gives us a value of 205.6 kilonewton per square meters. Take note that there are two cases on how to calculate for the soil pressures for eccentrically loaded footings. For case 1 is if the value of the eccentricity E is less than the length L over 6, the soil pressure is trapezoidal and if eccentricity E is equal to the length L over 6, the soil pressure is triangular. And the formula for the calculation of the soil pressures are as follows. The maximum soil pressure Q max is equals to the axial load P divided by the area of footing multiplied by 1 plus 6 times the eccentricity E over the length L. And for the minimum soil pressure Q min is equals to the axial load P divided by the area of footing multiplied by 1 minus 6 times the eccentricity E over the length L. Then for case 2, if the value of the eccentricity E is greater than the length L over 6, the soil pressure is triangular. And the formula would be Q max equals to 2 times the axial load P divided by 3 times length L divided by 2, minus the eccentricity E, multiplied by the width, B. Now, to continue for the second step, we will check if the assumed size of footing is safe or not. Let us begin with the longitudinal direction. We will calculate for the eccentricity along x-axis, Ex, that is equals to the service moment along Y, Msy, divided by the service axial load, Ps. And the result is 100 mm, and since it is less than the value of the length Lx divided by 6, that is equals to 633.33 mm, the soil pressure is trapezoidal and the formula of the soil pressure Q max is equals to the axial load, Ps, divided by the area of footing, multiplied by 1, plus 6 times the eccentricity Ex, over the length Lx. And the result is 162.11 kN per square meters. And to calculate for the minimum soil pressure, we have, Q min is equals to the axial load, PS, divided by the area of footing, multiplied by 1, minus 6 times the eccentricity E, X, over the length L, X. And the result is 117.89 kN per square meters. And since both Q max and Q min are less than the effective soil pressure, Q sub E. Therefore, the dimensions are safe along longitudinal direction. Now, doing the same process for the transverse direction.
We will come up with the value of the soil pressure Q max equals to 190.4 kN per square meters. And Q min equals to 89.6 kN per square meters. Which are all less than the value of the effective soil pressure, Q sub E. Thus, the dimensions are also safe along transverse direction. Moving on to the third step, that is to calculate for the net upward pressure, Q sub U. For the longitudinal direction, we will also calculate for the eccentricity EX, with respect to the ultimate loads. That is equals to the ultimate moment along Y, divided by the ultimate axial load, and since it is also less than L over 6. The soil pressure is trapezoidal. To calculate for the maximum net upward pressure, Q sub U X max, we have, the ultimate axial load, divided by the area of footing, multiplied by 1, plus 6 times the eccentricity E X, divided by the length L X and the result is 220.37 kN per square meters. And to calculate for the minimum net upward pressure, Q sub U X min, we have, the ultimate axial load, divided by the area of footing, multiply by 1, minus 6 times the eccentricity E X, divided by the length L X and the result is 160.27 kN per square meters. And doing the same process for the transverse direction. We get the value of the maximum net upward pressure, Q sub U Y max equals to 258.83 kN per square meters. And the minimum net upward pressure, Q sub U Y min is equals to 121.8 kN per square meters. The fourth step is to check if the section is safe for one way shear. And take note that the critical section is located at the distance d from the face of the column. First, for the x axis direction, we need to calculate for the shear force Vu, and then, we will compare it to the allowable shear. To do that, we will calculate first for the effective depth, d, along x axis. Now, if we cut through this section here, the effective depth d is equals to the thickness, 600 millimeters, minus 1.5 times the diameter, 20 millimeters, minus concrete cover, 75 millimeters, and that gives us a value of 495 millimeters. Then, we will calculate for the x sub s, that is equals to the length l x, minus, open parenthesis, length l x, divided by 2, plus, 0 0.5 times the column dimension, c x, plus the effective depth, d, close parenthesis. And that gives us a value of 1205 millimeters. After that, to calculate for the shear force Vu, we need to calculate first for the Q sub S, which has a formula, minimum Q sub U X, plus, maximum Q sub U X, minus minimum Q sub U X, multiplied by length L X, minus, X sub S, divided by length L X, and the result is 201.31 kN per square meters. And finally, for the shear force Vu, we have, 0 0.5, multiplied by Q sub S, plus, maximum Q sub U X, then multiplied by X sub S, times L Y, that gives us a value of 635.15 kN. And then we will compare this value to the allowable shear, that is equals to the reduction factor, times one-sixth of the square root of the F C prime, times the width B, then multiply by the effective depth, D and we have 0 0.75, times 1 sixth of the square root of 27.6 then multiply by the width 2500 mm, times the effective depth d, 495 mm, and that gives us a value of 812.66 kN. And since the allowable shear is greater than the actual shear force, therefore, the section is safe for one-way shear along x direction. Next is to check for one-way shear along y-axis. To calculate for the effective depth, d, along y-direction, cutting through this section. The effective depth d, is equals to the thickness, 600 mm, minus 0.5 times the diameter, 20 mm, minus concrete cover, 75 mm, and that gives us a value of 515 mm. 
Then, we will calculate for the y sub s, that is equals to the length l y, minus, open parenthesis, length l y, divided by 2, plus, 0 0.5 times the column dimension, c y, plus the effective depth, d, close parenthesis. And that gives us a value of 535 millimeters. After that, we will calculate for the q sub s, which has a formula, minimum q sub u y, plus, maximum q sub u y, minus minimum q sub u y, multiplied by length l y minus, y sub s, divided by length l y, and the result is 229.51 kN per square meters. And finally, for the shear force v u, we have, 0 0.5, multiplied by q sub s, plus, maximum q sub u y, then multiplied by y sub s, times l x, that gives us a value of 469.39 kN. And then we will compare this value to the allowable shear, that is equals to the reduction factor, times one sixth of the square root of the f c prime, times the width b, then multiply by the effective depth, d, and we have 0 0.75, times one sixth of the square root of 27.6, then multiply by the width 3800 millimeters, times the effective depth d. 515 millimeters, and that gives us a value of 1,285.15 kN. And since the allowable shear is greater than the actual shear force, therefore, the section is also safe for one-way shear along y direction. And the fifth step is to check for the two-way shear or punching shear. To work on that, we will compare the punching shear, PV, to the allowable shear of the concrete. First, we will calculate for the average effective depth, d, that is equals to the thickness, 600 mm, minus the diameter, 20 mm, minus concrete cover, 75 mm, and that gives us a value of 505 mm. Now, the formula of punching shear, PV, is equals to the maximum ultimate load, PU, times open parenthesis, LX times LY, close parenthesis, minus, open parenthesis cx plus d, close parenthesis, times, open parenthesis cy plus d, close parenthesis, all over lx times ly. And that gives us a value of 1652.13 kN. And we will then calculate for the allowable shear of concrete, which is equals to the reduction factor, times 0 0.33 square root of the concrete strength, times the perimeter of the punching area, 2 times open parenthesis, cx plus cy plus 2 times the effective depth, close parenthesis, and then multiply by the effective depth. And the result of the allowable shear, is equals to 2377 kN. And since the allowable shear, is greater than the punching shear, PV, therefore, the section is safe for two-way shear or punching shear. And that's it for this video. We will continue this again in the next video. Thank you for watching.